Welcome to Sense Talk. My name is Brandon, and I'm your host. Now, before we get started, please follow us on Twitter at Sense Talk underscore and on Instagram at Sense Talk. Now, before we get into t- last night's game recap between the Ottawa Sanders and the Calgary Flames, which was at 9:30 p.m. Eastern Time, which is very late, so I want to give a quick reminder if you're watching this tonight. The Sens play the Oilers at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Just a quick reminder that, like I've done throughout the season, I'll, and I will be continuing to do so. If the video, I mean, if the game starts past 8:30 p.m. Eastern Time, that video will be posted the day after. That's a quick reminder. Now, before we get into tonight's recap, a couple things. Firstly, in the link description below, you can order your Sense Talk shotgun tool today. We've sold out three times, so we had a fourth bunch for you guys. We got white ones, we got red ones, and we got black ones. So, if you want to order a cool piece of Sense Talk merchandise, you can do so by clicking the link in the description below and ordering yours today. Thank you all for the support. As well, go to SeatGeek.com and use the promo code Sense Talk to save twenty US dollars off your first purchase. Now, last night the Sanders took on the Calgary Flames, and for the Flames. Jacob Markstrom started, and for the Ottawa Sanders, Matt Murray started. And now I'm trying out a new style of video, so please comment below right now and let me know what you think so far about this style of video, because in today's video, I'm not going to go through the game lineup and this and that. I'm just going to go through the goals quickly, get to your questions, and to the stars. It's going to be more of a casual type of video, so please let me know in the comment section below if you enjoy this type of videos. This type of format will be done only for the day after videos. If I'm fo- posting a video... You know, immediately after a game, let's say the Sens are playing the Leafs at 7 p.m. Eastern time, um, I would post that video. It would be the same with the, the, the full lineup and everything. But I feel like if the video is a day after the game, you guys want to know more about the actual game itself and less about the lineup. So that's what I'm going to try to do. So let's get to that. Let's get to the goal. So in the first period, Ottawa's, you know, it's not looking too exciting the first 10 to 12 minutes in. It's a very boring game. But then Connor Brown slips one five-hole pass Markstrom. Ryan Dezingle gets one on a nice pass from Chris Turney. The Sanders are up two to nothing going into the second period. And in the second period, the Flames and Sanders exchanged lots of chances. But the Sanders continued their strong push, especially considering Calgary was on a back-to-back. They looked tired in that second period. Sanders took advantage, making it a two-goal lead again after the Flames got one back from Giordano. After the second period of play, the game is at 3-1 to and Ottawa looks to be in total control of the game. Until we get to the third period of play, where the Sanders completely collapse. They allow the, I think the shots were like 18 to 3 or 18 to 2 or something crazy like that. In the third period of play, the Flames absolutely dominated. The Sanders gave up two goals to the Flames. And because of that, we headed to overtime and then the shootout. And, you know, I'm going to talk about the refs in a second, but it's important to note here that the Sanders in that third period um, had no excuse to give up two goals. To, to sit back and let the Flames get back to come back into it, especially considering the Flames were on a back to back, that just cannot happen. So um, moving forward, yes, you know they it looked great after. We'll get to what happened at the end, but in hindsight, regardless of the outcome of this game, the third period the Sanders have to be much more clean and you know defensively sound in canceling or you know pushing away any Calgary Flame chances because or any team's chances because you cannot collapse like that in the third period and the sense completely collapsed. But let's get to the overtime and, over- and shootout portions of this video where we may have much more of a smile on our faces. Let's get to that right now. Sens win, Sens win, Sens win, Sens win. The Senators win it 4-3 to three in a shootout. Versus the Calgary Flames in a wild night in Calgary, ladies and gentlemen. The Sanders went at 4-3 to three in a game where in the third period it looked like Ottawa would lose this one in regulation. But the Sanders overcame the adversity of literally collapsing in the third period. Overcame the adversity of terrible officiating, which we'll get to in a moment. And the Sanders came out with the two points in Calgary. And now tonight they face off against the Edmonton Oilers looking to get four points in 48 hours. Now in the overtime period, the Sanders got a couple chances. But for the most part, it was a boring period. A couple of missed calls, but we'll get to that in a second. Because in the shootout, the Sanders got two goal scorers. That being Tim Stutzler with a nifty move. And they break Batherson in the fourth round to win it. As the Sanders win it 4-3 to three in the shootout. 
Stutzla and Batherson. The Sanders have a plethora of, ch of opportunities to score in the shootout. You got Stutzla, you got Batherson, you got Josh Norris, you got Brady Kachuk. The Sanders have Evgeny Danov. You have so many options now in the forward group to score in the shootout, which we haven't seen in a few years, to be honest. So, you know, Stutzla scoring on the shootout. I think he's two for two now. That's a good sign. Drake Batherson continues to impress. In the game, he looked great. In the shootout, he got the winner. So that's good news. And overall, the good news is the Sanders' young forward core is performing still in tough situations like a shootout, which is always great to see. Now I'm gonna lower. I'm gonna turn it off because we're gonna talk about the officiating now. I don't like to blame the officiating most of the time, but last night it was a rare amount of questionable calls. It was just terrible officiating, and I understand that. Officiating a major league game, especially a game like hockey, is a tough one. You're you're on a small surface of ice around 12 hockey players so skating by you at 20 to 30 kilometers per hour. It's a tough position to be in to make calls in the snap second. I understand it. That being said, the Sanders last night, you know, a lot of calls on the Flames were missed. And they were blatant, ridiculous calls that were not called on the Flames. That being said, the Sanders were called on eight penalties. That being said... Eight penalties called on the Sanders, two on the Flames. And that third, and I'm rolling a clip here, you're seeing multiple calls missed from the officiating from the Flames on the Sanders. Eight penalties on the Sanders, two on the Flames. And you're seeing this. Like, look at the last, the last clip on this um, highlight reel, I guess, is Stutzla, who gets tripped down, I think, by Anderson or Matthew Kachuk. And then he's called for a dive, so it's a four on four late in the overtime period. This game could have been ended in overtime because the Sanders should have had a power play there, but they didn't because the officiating called a dive on Stutzlow and he was clearly tripped. And my beef with that is the fact the Sanders, their penalties were 8-2 to two and some of the calls on the Sanders were warranted, but many weren't. I say half of them were, half of them were not warranted. So the call that minor, that, that you know, embellishment call on Stutzlow in the latter parts of the overtime period it's blasphemous. It's ridiculous. And frankly, the officiating was so inconsistent last night. And I understand it's tough to be a ref. But it was so inconsistent last night that the Sanders are frankly lucky they even got the opportunity to win this game. Because the refs made it so lopsided in favor of the Flames. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that was intentional. That's not what I'm trying to say. But the refs need consistency. They need to have consistency. And this season, and I think the last few seasons, we've really seen it. The refs have not been consistent on their callings. And last night... That was ramped up to a thousand. It was just such an inconsistently called game, and it looked like a lot of the calls were just not in favor of the Sanders, and they're, they shouldn't be in favor of anyone really. So it was just a brutal game officiating wise. I've seen a lot of comments on Twitter, so I just wanted to bring that up. Now, speaking of comments, I'm going to get to your questions before we wrap up today's video because we uh, were eight minutes in, and the Sands play in three hours or four hours from now. So. I want to get to your questions quickly. So the first question comes in from Michael or from at Got Moke. By the way, uh, they have a podcast. So go to their Twitter account. I've been on their podcast. Great stuff there. Now the question is, serious question, is Mike Riley good? Uh, yeah, you know, he's solid if he's put in the right position. He has great offensive instincts. He can really utilize a pass. The issue is his skating, while good, he's a fast, good, uh, effective skater. He also can lose his heels and turn over the puck quite often. And if he's not losing the puck by falling, he's turning it over through his pass. So offensively, he's dynamic, but defensively, he's a liability. So if you can clean up the defensive issues, I think he could be a really effective defenseman in the National Hockey League. The only thing holding him back is his defensive liability. So he needs to clean that up ASAP. Next question comes in from Noah Reichstein. They ask, why does Batherson stand on the wrong side of the net on the power play? He's not set up for the one-timer. Common theme I always see for the Sanders on the power play. Why is that? Well, it's very simple. Bruce Garriott touched up, touched up on this a couple weeks ago. And they, they the Sanders view Drake Batherson and Tim Stutzla as dynamic passers and shooters. They view that regardless of Batherson's here, where you can just corral the puck and shoot it, or over here where you can be for a one-timer, the Sanders view an equal opportunity for Batherson to score. They view, even if it's a one-timer or just a corral, wait, and then shoot approach for Batherson, regardless of what side Batherson is on, the shot will be equal amount of threat. But what the Sanders want to do is have Batherson and Stutzla on these sides so they can utilize their passing abilities. If you have Stutzla here, sure, you can open up for a one-timer, 
But if you have him over here, you have him on his proper side of the ice and he can really get a nicer pass going to Batherson who can rip it. So it is an interesting strategy. I, I would love to see the Sanders, of course, give Batherson and Stutzler some opportunities on the one-timer positions. And I definitely support the Sanders switching it up. But I do understand why the Sanders are trying the strategy. They want to utilize Stutzler's and Batherson's creativity and their passing abilities. And I like that. But I do agree. I would like to see Batherson and Stutzler get some one-timer opportunities. But hey, you know what? The power play has looked good in the last little bit, so I can't complain too much about what the power play is doing. Next question comes in from Liam Fernando. They ask, with all of our goaltending prospects, who will be the starter of the next four to six years for the Ottawa Sanders? Liam views uh, Mark Sogard and Philip Gustafson as the future netminders for your Ottawa Sanders. I would disagree. While I both, I think both can be starters in the National Hockey League, I think Joey Decord is the number one goaltending prospect in the system. I frankly think that he is the future of the Sanders uh, goaltending position. He is a stud. He's an incredible prospect. And I think this season... Um, provides a great oppor opportunity for Joey Decord to prove to the Sanders management that he is able to be an NHL goaltender full time. Now, hopefully Seattle doesn't take him in the expansion draft, but I do believe the Sanders will find a way to avoid that situation from happening. That being said, if I was the Sanders general manager, my net minor duo in the next four to six years would be Joey Decord and Matt Murray. But that being said, Matt Murray needs to live up to his contract, but I have full belief that he can and will. But if it's not Joey, uh, Matt Murray with Joey Decord, it's obviously 100% Joey Decord. And then my other net minder would either be Augustafson or uh, whoever else. It would be one of the other net minders we have in the system. But Joey Decord will be that number one guy for me in the future. I think he is that good of a prospect, and I think he is the future of the Sanders goaltending position. And the final question comes in from Nuri. They ask, who from UND will have the biggest impact on the Sanders? It's a tough question. A lot of people are going to say Shane Pinto. I'm going to say Jake Sanderson. His flawless skating ability and incredible passing and hockey IQ is so it's going to transition so flawlessly into the National Hockey League. And on top of that, a top four defenseman is so valuable in the National Hockey League. So I think Jake Sanderson and his skills are going to flourish in the NHL. That being said, Shane Pinto will 100% have a great NHL career. I think he could potentially even be the number one center for the Ottawa Sanders in the future. I just want to see what he can do against tougher competition in the AHL and NHL before we officially say he's going to be a top six fixture of this team in the future. I think he will be, but I want to get that assurance. But for a defenseman who already has the great skating, great passing, and great hockey IQ, and obviously a boom of a shot, a big body, you know, Jake Sanderson has the skills and tools right now to be an effective NHLer. So I have no worry with him. And I think Pinto should not have an issue with being a top six forward either. It's such a tough call. You can go, at the end of the day, I think Sanderson will be the guy um, right now, but I, you can go either way. I can fully see Shane Pinto being the number one center and Jake Sanderson being a top four guy on this team. It's just, regardless of what it is, the Sanders are very blessed with their prospects at UND. Besides that, the next Sens game is tonight in four hours from now at 9 p.m. Eastern time against the Edmonton Oilers. So, um, we're going to, we're going to end this video here. The Sens talk star of the night is Matt Murray. Congratulations to you, Matt. And uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys like the style of, um, you know, recap or video. If you did like it, please comment below and let me know what you think. And if you didn't like it, let me know in the comment section below and let me know what you think. And most importantly, let me know in the comment section below below and let me know what you think about the Sanders win it was a huge win and a great win on top of that now besides that the Sanders win four to three thank you all for watching be sure to like this video share this video circle stuff and click the big red button down there and subscribe to us and most importantly turn the notification bell on so you get notified whenever we upload a new video besides that the Sanders win it four to three the Sanders play tonight at 9 p.m eastern time versus the Edmonton Oilers so I will see you tomorrow after the Sanders hopefully get another W versus the Edmonton Oilers I'll see you then